WOCA. Ocala. All right, 23 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Robin, when we went to the uh, the menorah lighting ceremony a couple of years ago at the invitation of Rabbi Yossi Hecht, downtown on the square, you remember that very well, I'm sure. We, we were Jewish for the day. Remember that? we were yes. we, Everybody was Jewish that day, right? We were, we were all honorary Jewish people. Uh, and this is, this is the weekend everybody becomes an honorary I- Irishman, right? Everybody's Irish on, our, our, yep. on St. Patrick's Day, whatever they yep. say, right? Uh, Rabbi Yossi Hecht is in the studio with us, and uh, you look a little Irish today, I'm not sure. Uh, he's, of course, the rabbi of the Chabad, Lubavitch Jewish Center of Marion County, um, and he's going to teach us about the Jewish celebration of Purim. Hope I said all that right. Good morning, Rabbi. Good morning. How are you? It's good to be here again. Pretty good to see you. Can you do an Irish accent? Can you do a leprechaun? I'm not really Irish. <laughs> that was good. That was very good. That was, okay. that was very good. But I can try. Oh, wow. You must have hung around with some. No, I don't really have any Irish friends, but but I wouldn't mind a pot full of gold. That I'll take. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's a good thing. Do you, do you buy the, the green cupcakes and all that? <laughs> yeah. So how you doing? I'm doing good. I haven't we, seen you in a while. We've uh, not crossed paths in, in for a while now, it seems like. Well, uh, it's, I disappeared a little bit. Um, I... Uh, I've been busy with a lot of our programs and events that have been going on and a lot mm-hmm. of exciting stuff. But here we are. Here we are. And I'm you're here to teach again. us about something, right? I'm here to teach you about the upcoming holiday of Purim. And when is that? That's going to be this Saturday night and Sunday. Tomorrow? That, uh, tomorrow night, yeah. Okay. okay. And Sunday. And uh, Purim is a very special holiday when we celebrate the story of Esther. Or uh, no, the story of Esther... In uh, the Megillah, as it's known, which is the book of uh, Esther, where she uh, comes before the, the, the king, Ahasuerus, and um, she, uh, sh- she is a Jewess, and she does not reveal that she's a Jew. And in the meantime, Haman, who tries to destroy the Jewish people, doesn't know that there is a queen who is a Jew in the palace, and um, eventually... Uh, she reveals to the king who she is, and uh, the king abolishes the decree of Haman and um, returns the, 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 the leadership of the prime minister, who was Haman till then, to Mordechai, who was the Jew serving in the palace. And that's, in short, in very short, the story of Esther. So what does it teach us? What does it teach us in today's day and age? How do we apply the lessons of that? Well, there are many lessons that we can learn from Purim. First of all, uh, the idea of tolerance when you have a person as Haman who for no reason hates an entire nation and uh, it's important to learn uh, tolerance and uh, love for other people, recognizing that people are different but still to appreciate that which they have. It's interesting that actually the story takes place in, in Iran many years ago, uh, which, is at that, which at that time was the superpower of the world. And uh, we can also learn f- the, from Esther, the fact that she was a uh, simple girl and she ends up becoming the queen in the palace. And uh, the power of what every individual has is not always uh, recognized. We don't always see it, but you have to go and bring out that potential and reach that. Wonderful. I, I love the way you're able to take the stories that, and make them more than stories. They actually become lessons. Well, everything has to you be know, a lesson. And, and listening to what you're saying and, and thinking about the world today and, and trying to make sense of it and thinking about the world of yesterday. And, it, you know, on one hand, we say, wow, we've come a long way. You know, we've abolished slavery. You know, we've given women equal rights and uh, we've, we've learned to live with one another. We've learned to have many cultures, many religions living in the same town and same community and getting along and then you look and say well, but what about North Korea what's going on there what about the Middle East why is there still these tensions right what about Ukraine what's going on I mean it's almost like we have these lessons we've become more civilized no nah, just kidding not really we're not really more civilized it just boggles my mind that we can't get to that point universally or at least you know all the whole wide world or whatever 
Well, change doesn't happen only from the top. Change happens from bottom down and uh, by every individual having an impact on another individual that causes change. Uh, we can't uh, expect that everyone is going to change overnight, but when we start a flow of change by every person uh, bringing about these, uh, th 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 these type of tolerances to their friends, to their families, to their own personal communities, then eventually that has uh, an effect as well, and eventually it will reach others too. And we have the obligation to teach every individual that. And what's really wonderful about all the celebrations you have, Rabbi, is that it's a true family event, and the children are there. They can see the horrendous acts that have happened before, and hopefully that'll be ingrained in them, and then as they grow, uh, they can keep these acts from happening again. Yes, 100%, and one of the most important things is children uh, getting involved. And uh, during this holiday, there are many customs. One of them is to get dressed up and we have uh, the children get dressed up and uh, the adults as well and uh, the, the idea is to recognize that sometimes we uh, have our faces covered and we don't want to uh, and we don't want to see the real self of who we who we really are yeah right 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 and uh, from time to time when we dress up we recognize well you know there's actually something that I'm trying to hide maybe I should reveal my true self, my true essence. Wow, wow. Does the uh, the synagogue have a position on the, the gay issues that, that we see in the news all the time? In other words, with that person, if you had a, a gay person in your congregation, would he or she say, you know what, I'm going to keep it to myself? Or would you say, you know, don't let everybody know? I mean, how does the, the synagogue, how does the Jewish faith in general feel about that? You, you always hear how the, the Baptists feel about it, the Catholics feel about it. The Lutherans. Yeah, how does the Jewish world feel about it? Uh, well, our feeling about it is that everyone is welcome, regardless of what your personal uh, situation is and regardless what your personal feelings are. Um, while, while, while we do have uh, our, our beliefs as far as our Torah law is, that we don't feel that a person has to be left out because of what their... Uh, uh, personal gender feelings are um, and uh, we we welcome everyone on each on their level I'm sure people are, are happy to hear that oh yeah do you know um, I was you know Robin and I play Robin plays the mandolin I play the accordion lately so <laughs> I, I looked I looked up accordion mandolin duos to see if I could find anybody else do you know I found a bunch of Jewish accordion mandolin duos well that's interesting accordion uh, is is a kind of uh, Many people use it as a Jewish traditional. Um, uh, uh, it, for for some of the old traditional songs, that was considered a, uh, a a typical instrument to use. I'm not quite sure why, but it just was. Well, it's a, it's a great instrument for Hava Nagila. Let me tell you. Yeah, some, something <laughs> like that. Yeah, it works well on that one. Uh, so, is does the uh, does Purim have um, certain established? customs in addition to the telling of the story do you are there certain foods that you eat anything like that are well, we invited to anything do you are you doing something we can come to no we wouldn't invite you <laughs> everyone else is invited come um, on i can play hava nagila <laughs> we, we we have the traditional hamantash and cookies which is a three-cornered cookie with some jelly inside they're delicious hamantash they're called hamantash uh there are in general four Laws, uh, four mitzvahs, as we call, four commandments for Purim. One is to read the story of Esther, which we read it actually in a an authentic scroll written on parchment with ink. And uh, we also give gifts to the poor. Every time we have a celebration, we always include uh, those who cannot afford to celebrate right, right, and make sure yeah. that they can do it as well. We give gifts of food to each other, to our friends, um, different types of food gifts, and we also make a big Purim celebration, and that we're doing for the community as well. And that is tomorrow. That's going to be on Sunday. Sunday, okay. At five p.m. in the Hilton. Okay, all right. And and so we just show up, and we what what do you want us to bring, other than me? <laughs> well, you can come dressed up in your best uh, favorite garb. We have a theme this year, we, as we do most years. The theme this year is Purim in the sixties. Oh, really? Yeah, so uh, you can in come, in, come in your best hippie costume. 
Or for some, it's not a costume, but, you know. <laughs> you know, you could go as John Lennon. Just change the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> you, you think I'm good with the beard? Everything is yeah, good? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. I mean, you, you look more like John Lennon than a duck. Tales guy, what's the uh, Duck Dynasty yeah, guy? Duck wow, Dynasty. should I take that as a compliment or an insult? Oh, I love John that? Lennon. Yeah, oh, compliment. Yeah, I was I was heartbroken <laughs> when he was killed. Yeah, <laughs> so so uh, so we can, we can show up at Purim and uh, gosh, I was going to ask something about this. So is there are there certain songs associated with it that that you sing or that we can sing? Or? Except yeah. for me, yeah, there are there are quite a few songs uh, in in connection with Purim. Um, for example. Uh, for example, the Hebrew Chag Purim, uh, which is uh, Chag Purim, Chag Purim, Chag Gadol Hulayhudim, which is which means uh, the c- celebration of Purim as a big day for the Jewish people. Nice, um, as well as many others. Yes, which we'll be playing. Do you sing it a cappella? You did just now. <laughs> well, I, yeah, <laughs> but during the uh, celebrations and during the services that you have at the uh, synagogue every week, do you sing a cappella or, or do you also have uh, instruments there? I generally I, I, I sing on my own uh-huh. without instruments on uh, on on uh, the Sabbath and on most holidays. But we will have some music there, some live music as mm-hmm. well. So tell me about this cookie. It's a three-sided cookie. What is it called again? It's a three-cornered cookie. Hush posh. It's called a hamantash. Hamantash. Um, and uh, the reason for that is because according to tradition, uh, Haman, who, who, who was the one who, in the story who, uh, who, you know, who wanted to, to destroy the Jewish nation, uh, according to tradition, he wore a three-cornered hat. And so therefore, oh. it's, so therefore it is a triangular cookie, right. and inside there is jelly. Esther is one of my favorite stories. I'm Lucifer, yeah, and that—that that is one of my favorite stories. And I just found her to be a fascinating woman. She, I mean, she really helped a lot of people. It's a really incredible story, and I guess you know now that they have the story of Noah, maybe the next one could be Esther, right? I, I hope so. I hope so because she's overlooked. I think. Well, you know, somebody pointed this out once, that, that the fact that there are women in high place not high places as far as like royalty, but uh, s- women in, in main roles in the Bible, in, in, in our religious books, I guess, is indication that it's not fiction. Because you, know, you have these certain element of people say, no, they're just stories. But back then, they wouldn't have made women like the heroes in some stories. That's 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 part of how they point out that no, this is real stories, real life, and these women did real important things. That's a very interesting point, uh, but and yes, we do find in the biblical stories many women involved, and in very special ways, and the women played very special roles in general and very important roles, and uh, it's not always ap- appreciated or looked at. That's true. By the way, I have a new way. I know that we, we're off the Purim topic just for a second here, but I have a new... Because Robin and I, we speak to everybody, including atheists who absolutely will insist, not only is there not a God, but there's not even intelligent design. So I have a new way, because I read something the other day, of arguing with them. Listen to this. Tell me... Do you, you argue <laughs> with them on the air? Yes, I know. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> I need you in here those days. Yeah. All right, so, so let me tell you what I read... And see if you see any, see any flaws in my argument. Kind of, you'll be like, I'll be like, you'll be my coach, okay? Okay. <laughs> so I read this story that apple seeds cannot be digested. Now, what's that got to do with intelligent design? Because if apple seeds can't be digested, that means the animals that eat the apples then carry those seeds with them. And when they poop, they place those seeds somewhere else so another tree can grow and it's automatically fertilized now tell me that the guy who says that there was a fish that became a monkey that became a person can explain how a tree knew to make a fruit that required an animal to eat it that would poop it out and put it over there <laughs> That's right. tell me there's no intelligent design in that whole scenario right well there. i thought you would say something like you know when, when you have parents who tell the kids that if they eat too many watermelon seeds and they'll grow a watermelon in their stomach yeah <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> right. So, so that that's another way. I mean, I guess watermelon seeds also don't digest, do they? I don't know, but that's a very interesting thing. I mean, uh, today, the more science is developing, the more uh, intelligent design is is becoming obvious. Uh, you know, to say 
that, uh, that, 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 that what we see today in the subatomic world Yes, and, yes. You know, and and the mic and the, the microns and the neutrons and the in in the photons and everything and the electrons that we have today, knowing that every you know the simple table that we're sitting at is not just a piece of marble, but it's actually is a very potent and powerful uh, a p- piece of 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 rock that uh, that that has an incredible energy and power within it, and uh, that goes all the way from the most basic, uh, uh, the, the most basic things, all the way to the human being, right? Uh, which in today, t- today, the more and more development that we're finding in biology, you know, with the, what 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 they're finding today, how incredible the human being is, you know, that that there's no machine in the world as powerful as the heart that can be pumping. They they can't find anything in the world that has the energy and power that a heart does. Is that right? Just wow. for an example. Um, and uh, the more the world advances, the more we see uh, God's hand in everything. Wow. And, and, the, and the more reason why we should just humble ourselves and say, you know what? It's not about us. So let's leave our neighbors alone. Let them live and let live because there's something bigger, better, smarter, wiser than us. Someone. And I don't know. When we uh, are uh, attending your event on Sunday, uh, will it be hors d'oeuvres you'll be serving or a full meal? And can we also bring non-perishable food items to bring there for the poor? Um, we, we will have plenty of food there, uh, not just hors d'oeuvres, but there'll be full, full-on food of uh, different sorts, mostly uh, deli style, but some other stuff as well. Um, you can bring some perishable foods. And uh, whatever you bring, we'll make sure it gets to the poor people and the needy as well. Oh, thank you. Okay, we had this discussion once about Jewish food on the show, right? And somebody said, oh, Kala doesn't know about bagels. I said, yeah, Kala knows about bagels. Yeah. I said, but you know what we don't have here? And then you tell me if I'm wrong, because maybe you know a place, Knish's. Because I'm not Jewish, but I used to go to the Jewish whatever, deli. Well, I'll tell you that we'll have some Knish's. You do have (laughs) Knish's? Where do you get them from? You make them yourself? They're from New York. Those knishes. The everything's from New York. <laughs> oh, everything's from New York. And yes, uh, whoever said about the bagels, I'll have to admit that it's very hard to find a good water bagel here in Ocala. I mean, you can buy bagels in Publix, but those are baked. That's the fake thing. Real bagels have to be uh, baked with water, boiled with water. And uh, Oh, you put uh, me in my place. I Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. I used to get a bagel every morning on my way to the Coliseum. I used to work at the Nassau Coliseum. As a matter of fact, there's a place in the villages called, I believe it's called Brooklyn Bagel, where they actually import water from Brooklyn to make their bagels. You don't believe that makes a difference, do you? I don't know. I never tasted it. First of all, how much would it cost to import water? That's got to be heavy. Yeah. (laughs) You got to get all that water from Brooklyn. The tanker truck. In Brooklyn, come on. <laughs> How is the water there any good? I mean, I, I was wondering the same thing, but that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do they have knishes down there? I don't know. I was never in the place. I just know of it. Oh, you know of it. Okay. <laughs> uh, when you read from the scroll, is it does, does it have a uh, special place where it is kept throughout the rest of the year? Yeah, well, I keep it by me, the scroll, and uh, we, we have obviously uh, an ark where we ski- where we in general keep our scrolls. Mm-hmm. Um, the scrolls written in Hebrew, but f- uh, and and we read it in Hebrew with a special tune. But we also have a uh, simultaneous uh, animation that people can watch as the Megillah is being read. Oh, how wonderful! Yeah, that is really fascinating. So for those who have difficulty. Uh, listening to the Hebrew or reading the translation, or for the children, you'll be right, able to watch right. an animation as we're reading the Megillah. Oh, that is well, When we went to the uh, the ceremony where your son's hair was cut, you, you had a letter, I think it was, that you read in, in Hebrew and then somebody translated it, right? Was, yeah. it, was it your dad, by the way, who read the, the Hebrew? That was my father-in-law. Father-in-law. My, my wife's father. Okay. Um, the, the, the letter was written, was written by... Um, our, uh, m- my leader, Rabbi Schneerson. Um, was he the man who, who showed up at the end? No. There was uh, an, impo- no, an important ra- rabbi who showed up at the end, right? Rabbi, rabbi, Schneer- uh, rabbi Schneerson is the leader of, of the Chabad movement uh, who lived in New York. And um, he, uh, he passed in 94, but uh, obviously the organization still lives on. Uh, we have 3,500 centers worldwide. 
uh, based on his leadership, basically teaching the importance of uh, taking the Jewish teachings and reaching out to the world, to the Jewish communities worldwide, as well as the uh, secular communities to uh, show the importance of, uh, of, 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 the, of the Torah's teachings. Um, and uh, when I was a little boy, when I received my haircut, I, I got that letter from him, as well as thousands of others who also received mm -hmm. letters from him, uh, basically wishing me well for my, uh, for my uh, haircutting ceremony, and I wanted to share that with my son as well. Wow, it was a wonderful ceremony, and education for us as well. Oh, yes. I think that's what's mostly wonderful about you yourself as a person, Rabbi, is that you make sure everybody, everybody in the community is involved and you always have open arms. Even if someone's in trouble and they don't know who to turn to, sometimes they come to you and you help. Well, I, I believe in the importance of uh, recognizing that we're not just here in this world to live alone but we're here to uh, we're here for each other and everybody has to be part of that that's exact, exactly right Do, who, can i ask a, a sensitive question um i think it was your wife i'm serious i think your wife posted somebody that you knew died uh, the wife of a rabbi uh yeah the uh, the chabad uh the, the chabad leader she looked from, like a young lady from alpharetta she was 37 years wow. old and she was a mother of eight eight young children wow it was a very tragic uh story and uh, she died suddenly, and it was a, 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 a time for a lot of mourning for our community, yeah. Natural causes or accident? Or? Uh, no, she, she told her husband she was having a headache, and uh, I guess she had an aneurysm or something, oh, wow. and uh, she just died. She just didn't wake up. You just never know, you know? Yeah, and she was a young woman, 37 years old. Yeah, mother of eight children, and uh, it was it was really it was really sad, and uh, the community is still having trouble getting over it. And their synagogue is in Brooklyn. No, they're they're the they're the leaders of the Chabad in Alpharetta, Georgia. Oh, in Georgia. Okay, I don't know yeah. why I thought it was up up north somewhere. Well, way up north, I thought. Uh, well, yeah, you you do teach us as Rob as Robin pointed out, and you include us in on these things. We appreciate the fact that you've invited us to a few things. Uh, since this is going to be for the public on Sunday, what do you do on uh, what do you personally do with your family uh, tomorrow evening at sundown? Do you, is there any? We read the Megillah uh -huh. uh, between ourselves, uh, and if anybody particularly wants to hear it by nighttime, you can get in touch with us and I'll and you can join us while we read it in the evening time. We also have a, 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 a an event in the villages in the morning at 11.30 in the town place suites, uh, which is in Spanish Springs. So if uh, there are any villagers listening, you'll know as well that we have a Megillah reading. Uh, with, uh, Megillah is the story of Esther. We'll be reading the story of Esther as well in the villages in the morning and then here in Ocala at 5 in the afternoon in the Hilton. All right. Uh, Rabbi Yossi Hecht, as always, thank you. Your website is? Jewish Marion, as in MarionCounty.org. JewishMarion.org. Jewish and you want, you want to give out your phone number? 352-291-2218. All right. And we do have it on the guest list today. If you are driving and can't write it down or call us up, we'll be glad to repeat the rabbi's phone number and website for you. Uh, Rabbi, tell your wife and everybody that we know over at the synagogue that we said hello. I will, and thank you for having me, as usual. Thank you. Have a happy Pur Purim. Purim, that's right. Purim, and happy St. Patrick's Day. All right, to you too. <laughs> are, are you Irish? No. No. Oh, well, I am this weekend. I'm Jewish this weekend. I, I'm whatever, whatever yeah, it calls for. Everything works out. Whatever right? it calls for. As long as you get the pot of gold, that's the bottom line. <laughs> as long as we get a knish. That's knish right. and a pot of gold, all right. See, I was never a fan of the meat knish, by the way. I always liked the potato knish. They have potato knish. They have what they call a kasha knish, uh, which, is a, which is like a, a, a black rice uh -huh. that goes in the knish. Oh, I didn't know They that. have meat knish. Yeah, they have all kinds of knish. Now I know I'm not really eating a real bagel. Yeah. I get, we get one boiled in water or whatever. That's right. Who knew? So you, you don't you don't make them at home? You don't have a bagel cookbook or something? Oh, I wish I did. <laughs> uh, as of now, I'll have to import them from New York. <laughs> there you go. All right, we will uh, take a little break, and we will be right back. We're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. 352-507-5352. 352-507-5352. 352 